is a body which has a role in the process of national government, but is not a government department, <laughs> or part of one, and which accordingly operates to a greater or lesser extent at arm's length from ministers. So that doesn't, make, doesn't mean anything. It, so it's this thing, except from when it's not that thing, because it's really another, and it also exists between a spectrum of all the other ones. <laughs> if this isn't making sense, it's because it isn't supposed to. Yes. Again, this is a large part of how the performative failure works, in that you have performative failure, but you cannot pinpoint where it comes from because of the sovereignty issue and because of the deliberate rat's nest that is how the British government operates things. One thing I will say, though, that is interesting with these is that the bottom one here that's made to seem as if it has very little importance yeah. is one of the only ones, I think, within here that really is able to declare its own rules in a lot of ways. Non-ministerial department is a government department in its own right, but it does not have its own minister. However, it is accountable to Parliament through its sponsoring ministers, a non-ministerial department is staffed by civil servants and usually has its own estimate of accounts. So in that sense there, what they're talking about is a wholly unelected body that is commissioned by ministers who sponsor it but aren't wholly responsible for it. Yes. And can then actually almost sort of declare its own rules to a certain extent. Whereas you're sort of different elements of councils, environment agency, health and safety, DVLA, HM Pres. Met Office, these take policy from Parliament. The non-ministerial departments here, but I think are the only one that would actually give policy to Parliament. We'll, we'll come to it later, but any part of this machine, the problem is that all of these bodies were affected by what we talked about last time, which is Brexit. Yes. And so any of them could hold up the process or be used as an excuse to hold up the process. And there are so many different tendrils and so many different mechanisms through which to undertake performative failure. It's it's quite staggering that, uh, that anything gets done, <laughs> which is the point. That it, It's the whole point, but we're trying to explain to you really without belaboring the point too much, quite how much of a uh, of an arm's length illusion there is here that these are non-political neutral bodies and therefore their failure is a non-political neutral failure. Yes. And it means that the best, you know, with the best intentions, Whatever they're saying can't be done, cannot be done, because they are not political. And we will see that when it is suggested they are political, ministers are slapped down very fast and many apologies well, get given very quickly. As a slight aside, this is also partially the reason why we don't always just buy into the incompetence narrative. Yeah. You know, if you watch, obviously, our one on the skills collapse, there is definitely an extent to which people are less skilled at a whole number of things in a way that otherwise normal people used to be 20, 40 60 years ago. However, the regime itself, I don't always buy the incompetence argument because it's very easy to say, you know, hand in hand, this is some body that just has a bunch of civil service people and the reason why they constantly fail at policing immigration is because they're stupid and they can't do their jobs. Well, yes, the opposite of, perf of performative failure is, I don't know, what I would consider like unattributed success. Yes. It's, thing <laughs> it's things that are doing very well, being administered overzealously that no one quite seems to be responsible for. We talked about that during the demobilization stream and about how local councils are being used as vectors for global power. It, but that's another thing, that you will have a large amount of unpopular measures that are being enacted that come from nowhere. Nobody wants them, nobody's responsible for them, and yet everybody's doing them. Mm. And the role of independent bodies in climate governance, the UK's Committee on Climate Change, has, again, I don't want to read the full report, but it really is talking about that stuff. It's talking about the fact that despite it being a very unpopular political project and really explicitly saying that, that all of these bodies can act together to effectively force a UK government to act against its supposedly sacred political mandate by the electorate to implement what needs to be done in a neutral sense through climate change. This is the, you know, the unpopular success that, that can't quite be attributed. Yes, and what it also does as well is it adds, it's like an, a new stitch that's got to be unpicked for yeah. every other preceding law. You know, any, any law that comes after this, does that now comply with the requirements of the 2016 Energy Act? Yeah. Which then precedes a whole other realm of debate and arbitration, as you would like to say that could lead to a situation where you have even further performative failure. 
it's again, yeah, Catholic but never imagined a, a bureaucracy this unwieldy. It is well, it is not comical and it is not silly because it serves a purpose. And again, the most liberating thing about studying this is realizing that most of it is not real. This is not actually how government operates. No. It will never be how government operates. Um, and a lot of people get very confused and scared by looking at these things because they think, oh God, no one's actually in charge. People are actually in charge. You're just really not supposed to see who they are. Yes. <laughs> it's, and it's very obvious when you encounter both sides of this equation, really. But um, here's, here's one of them. That there was this this period of the civil... God, just the, the internal civil service magazine. Civil service world. Well, basically, yes. There's so many of them, they have their own publications. Um, but... <laughs> They say this is how the sausage gets made. It's all so tedious. No, it's uh, this is not actually how the sausage gets made. This is how, yeah, exactly. This is how the sausage gets unmade. Yes. Accusations that civil servants are resisting attempts at post-Brexit reform are crass and damaging to morale, the government's former top lawyer has said. After Attorney General Suella Braverman said ministers were fighting to having to fight against officials remain bias. <laughs> Uh, but you're the party elected with a 70-seat majority. Why do you need to be concerned with a bunch of civil servants running around with a Remain bias if you're supposed to be the people in power? The bureaucracy is obviously very opposed to any level of even surface kind of deglobalization, even the window dressing of it. Mm. And acknowledging that the civil service is staffed by career managerialists who regard the British populace in the same way a child with a magnifying glass regards an ant colony is not allowable. The illusion of the neutral must be maintained. Yeah, because that's what this Becky Smith character is saying isn't so much that, oh, you're you're wrong to suggest that we are all Remainers. It's more, how would that impact what we do in our job as neutral, honest civil yeah, servants? That's damaging to morale. Um it's it's a, described as a jibe, crass, damaging to morale. No one anywhere in this says it's untrue. Well, where's like what's the like the conclusion for this article? Is it just like complete nonsense? It just it's talking about uh, Braven caught the attention of children's book author Michael, Michael Rosen. Rosen. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, responding to the Bravens, it, there's no real conclusion here, which is why I don't want to read the article. Oh, but, fair enough. But it's more just a rebuke, and it's like a list of. Oh, David Penman and Michael, you know, basically being uh, being rebuked. Yeah. Who by... can think of any government anywhere, anytime, attacking its own bureaucracy and or professionals in order to appeal over them, in order to win allegiance from the public or the people? I mean, that's almost like an interesting kind of point because that's him doing the Gottfried thing, but backwards. Yeah, he's doing the. He... <laughs> that's that's very funny. Now the. They must be the priests in this yes. situation. You cannot directly appeal to the people because, as we said the last week... The people were wrong on this one. Yeah, that, well, also, the people do not hold sovereignty. No. Uh, they're supposed to. Oops. Sorry. But our democracy is uh, is held up by all these different institutions and directly directly appealing to the people apparently is not part of our democracy. But there's another one here just from Hollywood magazine. Again, this is a uh, one that's made for essentially Hollywood insiders. Um, UK Minister Steve Baker apologises for suggesting civil servants are trying to sabotage Brexit. Um, Steve Minster has uh, performed a climb down amid calls for Theresa May to sack him for making the claim in the House of Commons. Again, these are two different ministers. I don't think Sol Braveman apologised, but the, the entire thing was dropped. And this Steve Baker character ended up um, apologising. But it, it's, it's laughably clear to everyone involved that the civil service does not want these things to happen and is well, at scroll, every turn... Scroll down for a second there. Uh, yeah. What they say? Yeah. Meanwhile, Cabinet Secretary Sir Jeremy Haywood appeared to take a swipe at Baker on Twitter by praising the work that civil servants do to help ministers form evidence-based policy. policy. There we go. Every day, their great work supports the government in making evidence-based policy and helps deliver better public services across the country. It's non-political, Mr. Baker. Welcome to the Consent Factory. Yes. But 
Again, again, the civil service is the place where you see the largest amount of performance. Oh, failure. sorry. Look at that one above that there yeah. as well. Dave Penman, uh, this is the same one from earlier yeah. on. The Prime Minister should be questioning whether she has the confidence in Steve Baker's ability to separate his ideological position with his responsibilities as a minister. Yes, Brexit itself is an ideological uh, position. And that's what case. I mean by the expressly political cannot be allowed to succeed. No. Uh, Brexit is a political project and it must be held up by the neutral civil servants. They're merely doing their jobs. Um, there's the whole bunch of stuff here. I just wanted to quickly point out that Brexit is also a thorn in the side of EU bureaucracy. Um, and that in the neutral interpretation is supposed to be implementing policy, but has repeatedly been used as a form of punishment. Uh, the whole thing about the will they, won't they... With the border, it's it's like we've got the the worst of both worlds. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah. the EU laws, but we can't even really say that we're part of the uh, the sort of body that allows you to hold them to account. Not that that was ever really possible, anyway. No. Even in terms of in their eyes, that's no longer true either. It's weird. Everything mm -hmm. seems to have gone to a uh, a left to right alignment overnight, and completely buggered up how we display these. 